Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we've got severe flooding potential over the next couple of days, as well as strong supercells producing some damaging winds and some larger hail, and then the heat will really start to build and intensify as we go into August, and then an update on Hurricane Frank. Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. This is your Sunday morning update. I hope everyone is enjoying your weekend out there. I can't believe it's already the last day of July. <laughs> but we got some serious situations unfolding and going on for the next uh, couple of days. So let's talk about this. And uh, right now we're looking at the overall water vapor imagery this morning. And then, you know, the last couple of days we've been dealing with that uh, cold front that dropped all the heavier rain in around the St. Louis area, back into Eastern Kentucky. Fortunately, that shifted further off into the south, but this morning it's actually going to shift further back to the north and retreat and go over the same area as they got inundated with some very heavy rainfall. We've got a lot of moisture coming in from the Gulf, and that's just going to set the stage for yet another round, if not multiple rounds, of very heavy rainfall in a lot of areas just that just simply don't need it. We also have another sector up here across portions of Minneapolis that has some instability aloft and those could be on the strong to the severe side as we get into deeper in the afternoon time frame so but the last seven days has been really almost unprecedented with some very heavy rainfall if not stuff that you haven't seen in many many years uh you know st louis picked up you know up close to almost double digit rainfall as well as eastern kentucky they had all about 600 percent i mean 600 percent guys that's extreme stuff that's you, what you would normally see for this type of year. And this is the exact same area that's under the gun this afternoon and even tomorrow with yet more rounds of very heavy rainfall, unfortunately, gonna be impacting areas that just simply just do not need the rainfall. Cause here's the setup. I mean, there's that cold front lifting back up as a warm front and look at the buckle pulling in on all that warm air evaction down here in the Gulf of Mexico, those sea surface temperatures are plenty warm. You got a pretty strong, significant shortwave trough coming in off uh, off the, the west here. And that is gonna set the stage with this low level jet. Well, just prime conditions, unfortunately. Uh, and that's why they do have flood watches in place. But up to the north, yeah, we do have some severe weather to talk about this afternoon with that instability aloft. And so I'm thinking about four or five, six o'clock this afternoon, those storms in and around the Minneapolis area could be on the bumpy side. We're talking some larger hail. We're talking wind gusts of 60, 65 miles an hour. So definitely be on the lookout for those significant storms as we get deeper into the afternoon uh, time frame. But yeah, the overall picture, I mean, we've got that, you know, that ridge of high pressure that's been dominating up here into the Pacific Northwest. I think Seattle hit uh, nine, it, it, we're in the 90s five days in a row now so they have all the excessive heat warnings and watches out there but look at all the flood watches that's happening in portions of Cal California and Nevada I know Vegas had some pretty significant flooding the other night and then even like Mead's been getting some very actually beneficial rainfall so the the the, the monsoon has been alive and well and then and also the Pacific has been really active but what stands out is Right here in Eastern Kentucky, guys, that's the unfortunate nature with these flood watches now currently in effect that goes on until tomorrow. So we are expecting more heavy rain. In fact, the Weather Prediction Center upgraded. They actually upgraded to a moderate risk for excessive rainfall. And right in that area, that just is simply just do not need the rainfall. This is very concerning going into the afternoon time frame, especially into tonight with more rounds of very heavy rainfall potentially unfolding in, in, those, uh, in those areas. So let's take a look at this overall radar setup about 11 o'clock this morning. And you can kind of see, we just got rounds and rounds of showers and thunderstorms. The, the precipitation of water values of over two inches, two and a half inches per hour in this area. So it doesn't take much. I mean, it can really produce a lot of heavy rainfall in a short amount of time. Obviously that area has just been inundated with extreme flooding. It's not gonna take much, half inch, inch, and start cause significant problems. So when you're talking, you have the potential two, four, five, six inches on top of what you've already seen, that is, that is, that is very wor worrisome. And so that's why they do have those flood watches in place and those excessive you know, rainfall rates happening 
as we go into the afternoon time frame, four or five o'clock, you can see the bullseye happening up here in Minneapolis. I think that's when those storms are going to be alive and well and be the most, the highest impacting uh, as those supercells will, will form and then move off and shift off into the east and heading and essentially going at, uh, get, getting into Wisconsin. And then, yeah, further to the south, we'll just have those rounds and rounds of supercells coming across that conveyor belt of moisture where that cold front will be backed up as a warm front through Tennessee, through eastern Kentucky, back into Virginia and portions of West Virginia. And then that will funnel up and have some, some moderate rain showers into portions of uh, Pennsylvania and heading up into the northeast as we get into your four or five o'clock time frame. But here's the concern over the next 24 hours and some of these short range convection guidance is highlighting some, some fairly significant rains on top of especially what you've seen. So any of these areas in Kentucky where you see the reds and some of the, the lighter shades of the, the, the purples here, that's some four to possibly six inches of additional rainfall in those areas especially right here eastern kentucky southern kentucky northern parts of uh, tennessee so that is the concern heading into even portions of west virginia and virginia could be under the gun even parts of northern parts of uh, north carolina as well so this whole area just right along where that cold front has just kind of draped itself almost pretty much stationary as it just sits and spins and funnels in that conveyor belt of moisture but look at all the beneficial rain that's going to be happening over here into the desert southwest, especially happening in California as that monsoonal flow. And that's good to see rain showers in Nevada. Obviously, this area can only handle about a half inch per hour in these areas before you start impacting with those floods. And we have seen that it's been alive and well with this monsoon season, pretty active. And I think that's going to continue uh, to remain active. In fact, even to going into tomorrow, we've got a yet another slight risk for excessive rainfall and especially into Tennessee going into portions of uh, Kentucky there. So yet we have yet another round of very heavy rainfall could potentially unfold as that you know, weak cold front is just kind of sitting there still sitting in those same areas, pumping in that moisture. And then, after, you know, as you get into portions of the desert southwest, we've got some heavier rainfalls are going to be impacting uh, those areas as well. But let's take you out there in the Pacific, right? This is not impacting land or anything, but it's some pretty impressive on the satellite feature. This is actually Hurricane Frank out here in the, in the Pacific. You can actually see this is the Baja of California here. But yeah, it's a very pretty storm. And, it, you know, the Pacific has just been really active uh, this year, pumping out storm after storm after storm. And uh, it, it looks to continue for the first t first 10 days of, of, uh, of August, too, at least on the Pacific side. But here's the current track of Frank. It's already peaked in intensity. It's already trying to weaken. But this will actually lift further off into the north and there's California. So it's not gonna obviously impact California with direct impacts, but it'll have indirect impacts and bring help bring some of that, you know, additional moisture feeding into the monsoonal flow. And that'll help bring, as we get into Thursday, help add additional rains and portions of California just on kind of the remnants of what's left over from Hurricane Frank. But yeah, like I mentioned out there in the Atlantic, I mean, it's just crickets. <laughs> There's nothing happening. In fact, the last storm was Colin that dissipated around, I think the July 3rd. So yeah, we, you know, looking at the stats from July 3rd to August 3rd, there's only been four years since they've been tracking these storms forever uh, that that's no that had no name storm. So we're fairly rare territory to not see much of anything on the Atlantic Basin for the first 10 days of August. So it's quiet. It is definitely quiet, which is a good thing. <laughs> but I do think things are going to start ramping up. A lot of the extended data has it, especially towards you know the second half of August, really highlighting that third week of August. I think really things start to really start to ramp up on the Atlantic side. But as we go into Thursday, right? So we got that you know ridge of high pressure. It's we're in the hardest summer. A lot of these areas have already experienced their most intense heat. The ridge of high pressure will be shifting over into portions of the Rockies. That'll still be close enough 
uh, to, to, you know, to put widespread triple digits, but we've got the remnants of Frank that's going to be coming in off the Pacific and there's going to be some weakness as this ridge will build. This will slowly shift further northeast and it really start to really start to be dominating over the northern and central plains. That's going to add a weakness in the overall pattern for the west coast and bring a trough that's going to be coming in. So as we get into your Thursday time frame with the remnants of, you know, the, what's left over of Frank and then just the monsoonal flow. I do feel with those areas in the deserts will be inundated with more heavier rains impacting those areas. And a lot of those areas will shift over into Nevada again and get into portions of uh, California. And then as this as this uh, you know ridge of high pressure will be shifting, this will add what they call an easterly flow and then pull, try to pull some of the moisture further back into Arkansas, Louisiana, and eventually heading into parts at least parts of uh, Texas. But yeah, there's the setup by Friday. You can see the ridge of high pressure slowly starting to build and intensify, but also shift further off into the northern and central uh, plain states as we've got a, a pretty significant trough that's gonna be coming in uh, off the west. So the, the basically the remnants of Frank is gonna be more or less dissipating going to replace by this pretty significant trough that's going to be building off here off the west coast so that's going to bring all the cooler conditions really shut down any heat advisories heat excessive heat warnings you got out here in the pacific because we'll have below average temperatures now off up here into the west coast but that's actually going to help intensify the ridge in the midsection of the country and have what they call more or less a sweet play happening with that temperature gradient really starting to expand going into uh, especially towards the you know the middle to the end of uh, end of uh, this upcoming week so here's the setup by Saturday so uh, like I mentioned as this ridge of high pressure will be slowly shifting further if to the north you're influenced in this high pressure a lot of sinking airs impossible to rain under that type of situation but the further north it goes you're going to be allowed with you know have that easterly wave sneak in so depending on how far north this ridge will get and will weaken the ridge at least a little bit further to the south in Oklahoma and parts of Texas, that will allow that easterly wave to come across and pull that moisture further and further into east Texas and hopefully try to get that into central Texas where they obviously desperately need the rainfall in fact here's the highlights from the dallas fort worth metroplex i mean we're almost getting into rare territory guys there's been some rain lately but it hasn't really actually fallen at the airport and right now we're looking at 57 days in a row of not a drop at dfw airport that's the fourth longest ever all time and you can see tomorrow we'll be at 58 so yeah, I mean, we're looking at some kind of rare territory. The longest ever was 84 days back in the, the year 2000. That was also that La Nina year as well. So yeah, and, and the prospects for rain in Texas don't look like much. So you have to really rely on what the, what's gonna be unfolding from that easterly wave. So, cause here's the overall setup uh, as far as rain amounts for the next seven days. So yeah, nice to see a lot of the rain into the desert southwest, especially into Nevada and especially into California. So this is definitely some welcome rain where they don't need the rain is obviously in portions of eastern Kentucky and uh, Tennessee, you know, parts of West Virginia as well. And then further to the south, that's where we got that easterly wave Re really mainly highlighting Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi. And then on that ridge, the weakening, you know, how, how, you know, how further north it's able to go, that'll, that'll impact and how, how much rain you're going to be able to pull and not just in far extremes, East Texas or far extreme South Texas, but hopefully some of that will probably try to hopefully try to get it into at least the middle part of Texas, depending on that ridge of high pressure by the by bite won't be until next weekend. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Catch the latest update where I protect you for and after the storm.